Hello, welcome back to Ecommerce Apprentice. We're talking through an introduction to search engine optimization and a really important segment here or video we're going to do is how do search engines decide how sites rank? What exactly happens inside of search engines that make a decision to rank one website or one web page higher than another? So that's what we're going to talk through. And to do that, we're going to have to kind of uh, look at kind of the history of search very quickly. The early days of search was primarily dominated by sites uh, like these five here that were based on content ranking. And what they did was they, uh, when they crawled the web and they began to index all the content that they found on different websites into their, into their index, into their hard drives and their data centers, they would rank those sites primarily based on factors with, on, on the actual page. I mean, a real very primitive example of this is if your site and my site were competing for the search uh, term news, and your site had the word news a hundred times, and my site had the search the term news 101 times, then I would outrank you. Uh, that's a pure content-based algorithm that just says how many times does it say this? Okay, they must have they must be more relevant for that particular search. Now, as they began to develop their algorithm, they got more sophisticated, but it was primarily based on content. And then Google came along and changed everything. Uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin uh, wrote a paper at Stanford that really changed the face of search forever. What they decided to do was say, why don't we learn from the way the libraries handle um, how to rank various papers, journals, articles, and books. And if you're doing a PhD, uh, something like adolescent psychology. Um, the reason the the books that you would have to read in order to get your degree would primarily be determined by how important those different papers and those books are. You would have to uh, watch. You'd have to uh, read all the important papers and and all the important articles. And the way that you could tell if a article or a book is more important than another was how many times it was cited in other books. So if if this particular book was cited a thousand times and uh, the next most popular book in that subject was only cited 500 times, then of course that's the dominant book in that area of study and that became the most important, the highest ranked work within that area of study. And they said, well what if we apply that to the entire internet? But how do you um, how do you actually get your your website or your web page cited um, like you would in a book. A book or an article is cited in a footnote or in a bibliography. Well the way it works is f through links and so there were three primary ways that they they kind of applied this to the internet. What they did was they first of all looked at link popularity. So link popularity is simply the question how many links does this site have, in, have going to it. So in this uh, in this example let's say we have two new sites and uh, your new site has five links from other sites coming into it and my new site has ten well then my new site or new site B would win because it has more links it's more popular its link popularity is higher and therefore it will outrank you so the next time the, a person does a search for news my site's gonna be listed above your site because I have more links that's one of the variables within the algorithm that Google introduced. They also introduced a, an idea called PageRank, which was to say that not all links are created equal. So in the last example, it was kind of like one link, one vote. It's very, very simple that way. But then they also realized that some pages are far more powerful than others. So for example, a link from somebody's blog who just, uh, just started a blog yesterday is not worth nearly as much as a link from CNN.com. Um, and so the way that they determined the difference was through a, th a system called PageRank that still exists today with Google. So the way that PageRank worked was it said, let's say blog A has a thousand links going to it and blog B has a thousand links going to it. We both have a page rank of about four. Google, ha Google ranks, uh, they'll show us page rank on a scale of one to ten. So these two sites are linking to new site A, but let's say new site B has a link from a blog that has five thousand links going to it and it's a page rank of five, which is going to win? And in this example, new site B with only one link uh, will outrank new site A with two links because the link it has is more powerful and comes from a more powerful page rank. And um, 
a page rank five is eight times more powerful than a page rank four, and a page rank six is eight times more powerful than a page rank five. And uh, so, so page rank is a really important part of Google's algorithm. And you can uh, see the page rank of any page. Just download Google's toolbar and get the page rank plugin uh, for your browser, and you can see when you're browsing the internet the page rank of every single page that you go to on the internet. So they introduce page rank, link popularity, and link reputation. So not only is it important how many links you have going to the site and how powerful those links are, what the page rank are is from those pages, but also what does that link say about that page it's going to link to. So let's say I'm blogging along and I write the, fr the sentence, wow, this is my favorite news site. And then I create this hyperlink that you can click on and it goes to my favorite news site. Or let's say instead of writing that, I wrote, if you want to see my favorite news site, click here. This is an optimized link that is actually passing on a reputation to the news site. It's telling Google this site is about news. This link is telling Google this site is about click here. So this isn't passing on any useful page reputation. This is passing on very useful page reputation. So Google began to actually look at what's called the anchor text. It's the text that anchors the link, the little blue underlined text. And that would pass on link reputation to that particular site. So the text used, uh, the anchor text or the link, passes on link reputation and it helps with keyword ranking. So if I want to rank for the search phrase or the word news, then I would like to have more links that actually say news in the anchor text, in the text that the blue underlined piece just like this is here. So those are the three things that were introduced. So to answer the question, how do search engines decide how sites rank? The answer is a link-based algorithm. They have an algorithm that primarily looks at how important are the links, how many links, and, um, and what do the links say about the site that they're going to. That's primarily how they do it. How many links are going to the page is link popularity. How powerful are the inbound links? That's page rank. And what does the anchor text in the link say? That's link reputation. There are also at least a hundred or more other variables, but, but the basis of all search is link-based. Metadata is important. We'll talk about what that is later. On-page content, what the actual page says is important, but not nearly as important as links. Domain trust is increasingly important, and we're going to talk a lot about that. But links are the basis for all ranking. And so the, the, the moral of the story is get tons of powerful, optimized links if you want to rank highly.